Hello everyone and welcome in. We are at Fannin County High School for the first broadcast of the year, first football game of the year here on FYNTV.com. Fannin County Rebels taking on the Clear Creek Bobcats. Fannin and Gilmer, long-standing rivalry. Going at it again here in the 7th and 8th grade ranks. Starting off, we've got our 8th grade game set to kick off as here come the Rebels running out on the field. One thing, Brandon, that was interesting, um, talking to some of the coaches and stuff beforehand, both programs have about 60-plus kids on each side. This is going to be one of the biggest years, that, uh, and the uh, the number of coaches also, on, at least on one side, diminishing just a little bit. So the, uh, the activity is there to keep all these guys um, active and uh, making it happen. Uh, both both teams have uh, uh, a big um, uh, a big task ahead of them, but you know today, Jake, this is uh, this is like a really cool one of the biggest games uh, to, to be played, and really both sides having some really really good players too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Fannin County is going to be head coach uh, by Chris Thigpen. He comes from the high school ranks. He was offensive coordinator for the Rebels last season uh, on varsity, and Willie Dodaro is going to be the Clear Creek. Bobcats head coach looks like Fannin is going to come out to. They've won the toss. Yeah, it looks like they're going to kick this one away. So Fannin's uh, deep man, give us a little turn. Going to be number seven, uh, Jackson Bittner. A couple yep. of guys uh, flanking uh, with him. Looks like Brody Burnett, who's a wide receiver, or it could be a wing back, um, sets up on the right side and trying to catch our man to the left. The official jumps in front of him. Gilmer set to kick this one away. Madden Hopkins comes out, puts the ball on the tee. Brandon, it's been a while since we've been in the booth. It's been a while since we've done a game, but it feels good to be back. Uh, even if it is a middle school football game, this is a game that's got a lot of – this is really – I mean, it's the first game of the year, but it's for all the marbles in terms of bragging rights between these two and the high, Highway 515 rivalry. So our man over here, number eight, Ryan Preston, one of the running backs. But, yes, and, I, and I'll tell you, this is, uh, is going to be a real good test of uh, our broadcasting skills too because as we um, haven't seen these teams <coughs> and not as, not as much knowledge behind it, we can make this sound good. <laughs> or we can make anything sound good. Excuse me, that's number 60, Perez. He puts it in the air. And it's going to go out of bounds, so that's going to be illegal procedure. Set up fan in nice field position to start the drive. So they go, what, to the, the 35? Is that where they'll, um, they'll place the ball? Should be. And across turf today, um, trying to uh, check out uh, just how this feels because, um, you know, we're sitting pretty in uh, – in press box and um, 82 degrees uh, is what the air temperature is. Uh, says it feels more like 88 in humidity, but I would uh, I'd say bet uh, a little bit more after you're in direct sunlight. At least 88 down there. Now, Fannin um, should be what, like in more of a spread offense. This is what uh, they like to uh, jump into. Yeah, Fannin's coming out uh, spread. Cannon Holloway is going to be back in the lime green cleats and then um reed holloway is going to be back there in the safety orange cleats so should should be able to tell the two holloways <laughs> apart at least they did us a favor with their cleats little wildcat on the first play right snap taken handoff up the gut that's number 23 for the rebels he gets about eight yards. So out of that nice, uh, nice little end around, uh, Jasper Mueller, he'll be one of the running backs. Also, as we mentioned, Ryan Preston, number eight. We could see him into the backfield. Wing back uh, Brody Burnett uh, might set up in one of the slots. And Reed Holloway, as you mentioned. What do you um, think about that? Coming out first play, going straight to Wildcat. I, I like that. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's daring. Uh, just uh, direct, uh, direct to the guy. And, here you've got it. Uh, they're going to flood the lane, it looks like. Yeah, stacking it heavy on the right. Four wide receivers out right. Holloway takes a snap. 
errant throw, but still we're going to come up third and one, so they got short field. Peyton Bain looked like he was uh, probably the, the go-to guy, just uh, cut in a little bit too much into that. Uh, it almost looked like he was uh, – into what, like a slip screen instead of a yeah. bubble screen. Yeah. And, and, and probably the pattern was to go to the outside a little bit more. He would have he would have been there. That would have been not just first down, but um, probably uh, over past the 50. So now it's third and one. Yep, going to go out of the gun again. Send a man in motion. Take snap, low snap, handoff up the gut, and that's going to be enough for a first. Yeah, here why risk um, throwing a big pass that could uh, be broken up. Just, uh, you know, all you need is like one yard. So you get that one plus three, and now you're uh, pretty much at, at midfield at the 48 in uh, Fannin territory. Not too bad. And what we started out at the 35, so they picked up uh, in a couple of plays uh, 15 yards. Yeah, moving the ball pretty well. That was number 60, Perez, on the tackle for the Bobcats. He's plugging up some holes there in the center of the D-line. Got Reed Holloway split out right wide in the slot. Fake the handoff is Cannon. He's almost tripped up, reverses field. Uh, Still taken down for a loss, but that's a lot of ground covered for a loss of two. He had the momentum. He was, you know, I know he got um, trailer hitched there as he was coming around the corner and uh, around the picket fence there. But um, as he switched up, I don't think that was enough time for his lineman to shift and give him good protection, but ends up costing him a couple of yards. Yeah, second 12 here from the 46-yard line. Gilmer Bobcats defense settling in a little bit. Some nice stops. I like the all-white they've got going on. Iced out look. Out of the gun once again is Cannon Holloway. Takes a snap, drops back, throws to the left. Nice catch, Burnett, and he's got 14 yards, 15 yards on that play. Good little throw and catch from the duo. One nice uh, nice pattern that he ran. He ran right uh, in, and there were big gaping holes into that, but now um, – we could uh, we could see that um, Bobcats were uh, really uh, set up. Um, th they were anticipating that you could kind of see, but um, uh, Burnett just really uh, threaded the needle, and it was good pass. Good yeah, it pass. was was Holloway hit him on the money. So a new set of downs here for the Rebels. Picked up about 15 on that play. Reed Holloway lines up on the left side, and. Throw is his way. He dives, can't get on it. That's good coverage there. I don't know. If number but number nine, Patterson, I believe, was in on the coverage there for the Bobcats. Ryan Rellinger and the uh, number three. Okay. Um, yeah, and that was a bit better coverage. Now they've closed the gaps up. They're watching their men. I, I noticed in all the options there that uh, really Bobcats were just a little bit closer on their men on that last play when uh, you're – too wide out and let something like that happen can't let it happen again yeah definitely they get it i mean make a mistake once and don't let it happen again and that seems to be what they've done so far four wide receivers set holloway takes a snap slings it out to his running back can't handle it and that's going to bring up third and long now that one's right there i mean uh he had yeah. no interference um that one should have been money going back up the way that's just um, watching out and um, cleaning off your hands, so to speak. Yeah, Miller couldn't quite handle that one. Third and long, what do you think? What are the Rebels going to try to do here? Oh, you gotta, you got to air this baby out. Uh, you're yeah, and on the flip side of that, Clear Creek's got to know that's coming. <laughs> well, yeah, and watch what they're doing here. Uh, they're shading just a little bit to uh, come back and anticipate that. Because I don't think you want to, like, run it. You've you got too much uh, ground to cover. Might see what Holloway's arm's made of here if they decide to take a shot. Oh, but nope, they, they are going to hand it off, and Gilmer was ready for that, too. Number 11 gets up. Ca Cash Chastain makes the tackle. We don't have the uh, the heights and weights of, uh, of these uh, these players, but um – we got some. We got some pretty big boys down there. The, the the guys in the trenches, the four the four man front, they're putting a lot of pressure on their cleats, so yeah. to speak. And um, 
but they're agile, though. Uh, that's what I like. I mean, they're able to move and uh, get out of uh, the, the the pass coverage and get to the get to the man. Yeah, the Gilmer County D line. Yeah, I mean, looks they've good. tripped up the quarterback a couple of yep. times, and uh, but still, now you got to now you got to just air this one out. Yeah, fourth and nine. Holloway gets set, takes a snap, rolls out right, looking for his man Reed. Nope, ah. goes to number seven, and it's right at the line to gain. Finally forced out of bounds after a pickup of about 12, and that's going to be a first down. Jackson Bittner, uh, really good. Nice nice route. He goes out to very quick, makes the corner, and looks back in just at the right time. That was really well-timed to now get back up and get back into position. Yeah, they're going no huddle here. All right. Trying to get fast on the line of scrimmage. And here they go. Everybody's set. Holloway takes a snap. Going screen, big block by Reed Holloway, mm -hmm. picks up about five. Yeah, that was key right there. Um, and that opened it in entirely up because I thought maybe that um, Bobcats were playing back a little bit because you know they're going to probably um, go to the air again. And they've, they've had probably, what, um, getting close to a dozen pass plays. Yeah. Holloway looking to the sideline. I might have a little bit of confusion here on this play. Got his hands up. Not sure what's going on. Let's take a look at this uh, this block really quick before they start this next play. Reed Holloway absolutely leveled his man. Oh, wait. <laughs> what a dive. <laughs> Back live, they go up the gut, and the Rebels pick up another first down, move the chains on the ground. So now you just uh, not got to the door of the red zone, but you you broke through it like the Kool-Aid man uh, coming through here with uh, number 23, old uh, Jasper Mueller. And um, this one, uh, you know, now it's uh, as the passing lanes have closed down, you're getting closer and closer to the end zone. Uh, and you see a couple more come into the backfield. We'll see a few run plays here. Yep. Dives and traps. But Reed Holloway back there with Mueller. Burnett at the bottom of your screen, lined up wide, snap is low, wow. quarterback keeper all the way, and a huge tackle. Somebody missed an assignment there for sure. All right. Holloway trying to get through that one. I mean, first of all, you've got uh, a, a gate there opened up big enough to drive a Mack truck through because <laughs> and, and, and the lineman did one heck of a job uh, pushing back the Bobcats on that. question is just right there is getting up to the speed and getting through the hole, and, um, you know, touchdown town is just right there. Fabian Perez comes through, makes a big lick. Timeout for Fannin. Fannin takes a timeout. We'll take a timeout, too, and hear from our sponsors. Be right back, live on FYNTV.com. Out of the timeout, Rebels come out in Wildcat. Reed Holloway takes a snap and hand off a little sweep. That's Mueller. Takes it up inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. I like this kid. That, that's a nice counterplay. That, I mean, just uh, dropping back in and a uh, little reverse as they go through because you're anticipating, like in Wildcat, to get that, uh, that direct snap and just take off with things. But uh, 
he was the one who broke the hole there and uh, drove us into the red zone a little while ago. He's a yeah. good runner. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see a few more things. But, Jake, um, 50 yards in about five minutes uh, so far. We're, uh, the pretty much Rebels have dominated this first little quarter. Yeah. I Offensively, mean, that is. They've kept the ball out of Gilmer's hands. They go Wildcat once again with Reed Holloway. Cannon Holloway moves down to the bottom of your screen, split out wide. Burnett comes slot. Right side, Holloway takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, cuts back up the middle, and he's a hard man to take wow. down as he gets right to the line to gain. I don't know if they're going to give it to him. Looks like it's going to be fourth and yeah, these inches. Right, he's right on, the, right on the line. Wouldn't be surprised if we see another Wildcat play, except maybe under center. Reed Holloway tries to take this one and get an inch. Up the gut, maybe. Where the ball is placed and, and everything, I'd you know it'd be it'd be kind of cool to see like a little dump pass um, screen or something uh, go in, but uh, and they may do that here. You've got a man in a slot and a couple uh, set up, but um, still going to go out of the gun. I don't know what we've got called here. Oh, it's blow uh, it dead. illegal procedure. Oh. Somebody uh, somebody moved and twitched. So that's the first penalty. So really when you look back, uh, Jake, there's uh, there's not been really a lot of snafus, maybe, uh, you know, a missed pass, uh, or, but not a lot of uh, big miscues. Just the opening kickoff uh, going out of bounds, and that's the first flag. Yeah. And so this is uh, both sides seem to me like very well-disciplined men. You know, yeah, that, well uh, coached. Yeah, very well coached. So instead of fourth and inches, now you got fourth and five, and that may open up actually a good pass. Here they go. Yeah, yep, they're, they're going to roll out right, looking for Reed. Cannon's got to get rid of it, and uh, that one falls incomplete. Good job by the Bobcat defense there, forcing a turnover on downs. We're wow. going to see Clear Creek first time on the field when we come back. Welcome back. We're live on FYNTV.com. Jake West with Brandon Stevens. Bobcats come out. They go a little different look here on offense for Clear Creek than than Fanta. Yeah, this is what uh, going to be like a wing offense. Yep. AJ Callahan keeps it. He's tackled. Uh, might have got away with the Rebels. Might have got away with the face mask there. And yeah, AJ's trying to plead his case, but no flag on the field. First play from scrimmage for the Bobcats is a loss of four. So if I saw that right, it's that uh, Garrison Inslee eighth grader that uh, jumped back there and uh, knocks him back. So they lose, what, uh, three yards off this. They go from the nine back to the six. They were looking steadily at 91 yards to get down, and that's the end of the first quarter. No score as Fannin burnt this uh, first quarter up. Yeah, they uh, did a and, great and job holding on the ball. Great job holding on the ball. You would hope, though, if you hold the ball for eight and a half or seven and a half minutes, you'd get – some Six. kind of points, yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, we head to the second quarter. 0-0 zero, zero still, still here at Fannin County High School. At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our five Five area locations. Hey, Chevrolet, place gets it done. 
For more than 60 years, you've trusted Dave Chevrolet in Jasper. You've come to know our family and allowed us the opportunity to serve yours with dignity and respect. And today, as we celebrate four generations of family ownership, we just wanted to say thank you for your support. Dave Chevrolet in Jasper, proud to be your North Georgia Mountain Chevy dealer. Hey, Chevrolet, place gets it done. Find new roads. Circuit World has nine-piece living room packages at incredible prices. Get this stylish sofa and love seat, three tables, two lambs, 43-inch 4K TV, and stand. All for only $16.99.99 or $129.99 a month. Or get this nine-piece living room and reclining sofa and reclining love seat, now only $19.99.99 or $149.99 a month. These packages are amazing. Stop in today at one of our five locations and get the furniture you've always wanted at Circuit World. Welcome back. Gilmer County has the football under center. Handoff goes to Ryan Rellinger, and he maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage after a pickup of about two. So more of a, uh, a run option, uh, wing tee, broken bone type uh, uh, run team. I'm looking to see here, now flipping back over to Fannin County, I mean, these guys obviously have some speed, and I want to see if they fly around to the ball and uh, and they're and, and the last uh, couple of plays they have, and see how this uh, this run goes against people who uh, obviously can jump out there. My guess is is that uh, this is going to make it very interesting for Clear Creek. Yeah, and one thing about Fannin County's drive, offensive drive, they may not come up with any points, but when you're playing a team like Gilmer. Even through the high school ranks, they don't throw the ball much. So, you know, they've got to march the ball down on the ground about 95 yards uh, if they want to score. Here they go. little misdirection. Callahan keeps it and nothing doing. Fannin County defensive line shutting things down. Fourth and nine now for the Bobcats. Well, the one big thing here, Jake, is that you had eight men into the box and they weren't going to let even daylight go through the line. So, um, yeah, I'm, it's uh, this is – they're coming out. Um, uh, I'm really surprised that uh, – the way that they were uh, moving around and uh, scheming there, uh, that th they picked up that. But that's good, good defense. But um, fourth and what is this, uh, fourth and eight? Yeah, fourth and eight or nine as Cannon Holloway is going to be the deep man for the Rebels. And going to give Fannin County short field position. So yeah. now uh, you get back to it. Madden Hopkins set to kick this one away for Clear Creek. Gotta Fannin looks like it. they might be coming after this one. That'll be quick. You're uh, right at the end zone. Oh, that's a great punt. Yeah. Great punt and over the head of Holloway. Going to get back down, cross midfield. To what a punt. That's, what that's a punt. One, number one, that's a good punt. Number two, Holloway's smart to let that one go. And just, uh, you know, you're not you're not in bad uh, field position again. You're 51 yards away from the end zone. Six minutes left to go until halftime. So here we go. Seems like Fannin's offense has had the ball this whole game, and that's basically <laughs> basically the truth. As they come back to the line for their second drive of the game, try to put some points on the board before halftime, but the Gilmer defense stood tall last time. See if they can do it again. Yeah, defense uh, for uh, Gilmer should be tired. Yeah, they got just a, just a little time. breather, just a little breather there in between drives. Holloway waits the snap, takes it, rolls back, dumps it off. Ah, That's a great tackle of number five, Madden Hopkins. He's the one who punted that ball out of their end zone, and he comes up and makes a huge play. I was wondering about uh, some of the coverage here, but the men uh, there, uh, the, uh, the uh, Gilmer uh, basically uh, came around. I thought they did real good with – switching up uh, their assignments and covering men in that one and uh, that's that's really good uh, good defense because they didn't allow too much you got to think every time you play fan and county um at this at this level or any team that reed holloway's been on over there at the top of your screen in the orange cleats you want to stop him and i don't think we've seen him he's caught maybe one pass uh and ran the ball twice they've done a good job here they go trying to get it to him again nope they go to Burnett, and Burnett can't handle it. Holloway fires it to him, and that would have been a nice little chunk pickup. Thought they might go to Reed Holloway on the screen there, but nope. Bring up third and 11. I like this. I mean, uh, you know, the um, 
good game, kind of bringing yeah. some excitement. Um, the intensity is there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And <coughs> obviously, a little more offense from the Rebels and more defense from uh, uh, from the Bobcats, but. Holloway takes it, looking for Reed. Going to throw a jump ball up and off the fingertips of Reed Holloway. Falls incomplete, fourth and 11. Had his man beat. Yeah, he did. And he did. Um, that one's just uh, trying to get into position, and I don't know whether the sunshine got in his eyes or um, – uh, but. Uh, I think he was expecting the, the ball a little earlier. I think so. Yeah, maybe a timing issue. Yeah. Still fourth and long. They've got uh, to get to the uh, Bobcats 41. Yeah, and, and Fannin County's and got a lot of faith in their defense. <laughs> and you're going to have to probably um, air this one out again. Fannin's got a lot of faith in their defense, bringing the offense back out. Fourth and long. Uh, you're going to see. Uh, yep, got. Yeah, I think uh, we got one of the guards pops off. So you get, a, you get an advance of five. You'll. Take you over to about the 46. I think they got shorted a yard. No, it was fourth and 11. Okay. Yeah, fourth and 11. That's fourth and six now. Let's see, you think are they going to put the ball in the air here? I would. Got one man out left. Course, That's. You've Burnett. Got, you've got everybody on the on the near side, on the narrow side, but um, oh. nope, they're going to. little pooch punt, and it was a good one, a real good one. Gets them inside the 20. Well, and in this case, uh, you know, you're at the 47. Why not? I mean, uh, yeah, because uh, I think you would have probably picked up some yards, but the way they stacked everything over the narrow side, I, I was kind of expecting them to, uh, to throw it. Clear Creek comes out on offense for their second drive of the game. Not much happened. I think they may have went backwards last time they were out on the field, maybe picked up a yard or two. But A.J. Callahan, I saw him in some seven-on-sevens this summer, and he the kid can sling it. So I keep waiting on them to put the ball in the air. And he's got the best touch I've seen on a on a ball from an eighth-grade quarterback in a it long time. It went back a little bit, I think, on that first play, but then they sprung it past the original line of scrimmage and then – and went away. There's a pitch out to the right. Ryan Rellinger trying to get the sideline. Cuts it up. Pick up about, about five yards. Nice, uh, nice sweep. I, I mean, ran all the way. Of course, <coughs> he's he's getting away from the crowd. And um, what is that? Pick up five. Yeah. Second and five. It's a, I mean, you would think that this would be the case, but it, it's definitely the case here between these two teams. If you watch. The Bobcats or the Rebels play on Friday night. Their offenses, the high school offenses, are exactly what you're seeing uh, on the field right now from from the middle school teams. So they're doing a good job of working with the high school and 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 learning what to do from a young age. As there's a handoff up the gut, fighting forward about two yards there, bring up third and three. Yeah, you just have a need for uh, for some speed and running like your little triple options and yeah. uh, things like that, but. Um, the one thing you've got to always watch is uh, little plays like that run off the A-gap and, uh, you know, you're burnt. Um, but I think uh, the Rebels, though, on the other hand, <coughs> anticipating this because they, they keep crowding uh, the box a little bit more. About seven to eight men are close into the box. Yeah, look, they're going single coverage here at the bottom of your screen, just daring Callahan to put the ball in the air. And I think we got a false start, so, yeah. No, nope, timeout. Timeout. Timeout taken by the Bobcats. We'll take one with them. We'll be right back here live on FYNTV.com.
Welcome back. Live on FINTV.com. Gilmer County facing a third and three. Hand off up the gut again. Picks up about two yards, so fourth and short coming up for the Bobcats. Yeah, that was <clears throat> that was kind of uh, big there to, to get some uh, some positive momentum off that dive that uh, came along. But uh, fourth and one, you're deep in your own territory. You're 71 yards away. Time's clicking down. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd take off with it. Uh, run, that, run, that, run that same dive play, maybe um, even. But a punt. Yeah, that's what it looks like anyway. And the snap, well, the good. Ho Pretty good punt, too. Well, the Holloway's back there, but this one's going to give a, um, a, a bobcat bounce, and we'll end up right back around <laughs> midfield. So we're at uh, the 48 in Fannin territory with the uh, the Rebels set up. Yeah, Madden Hopkins has done a good job punting the ball away for the Bobcats. Third possession for the uh, for the Bobcats. They've had two that um, they had 65 yards in front of them. Uh, another one 51 yards, but that that big one from the 35, they got almost down to what uh, this six seven yard line turned it over. And they had a number of, you know, a strand of pearl plays going down and really good stuff. Um, just hate to see them, you know, get do all that work and then um, no points. But we're scoreless both sides. Yeah, none, no harm, no foul. There's Cannon Holloway. As Reed goes in motion, looks like they're going to maybe try a run up the right side here. Nope. Mm. Good job by the Bobcats getting in the backfield. Holloway airs it out. Uh, incomplete. I was wondering about that. I would, I would have almost tucked that one in and just ran with it as, uh, as best I could because – as he was near, uh, nearing the sideline, the options were gone. I mean, everybody was covered. You had uh, white jerseys and white helmets in front of all your uh, <laughs> your blue soldiers out there. And no, that one was um, just to, to throw it out. I almost worried that that might even turn into an interception. Yeah, I'm not sure who that was that got into the backfield, but a great job breaking free. Uh, I'm not sure which Bobcat defensive lineman that was. Great job breaking free and getting back there. Second ten. Man goes in motion for the Rebels. Holloway drops back. Going to go dump it off to number seven. And a good gang tackle. We've got a face mask, though, I believe. Number five and number nine for Gilmer County in on the tackle. Do have a face mask, so that's going to give some yardage to the Rebels. Well, in, in that one, really uh, nice pass, nice play set up. Everything was uh, turning it. But one thing I will say, uh, the Bobcats are beginning to pick up in uh, better coverage in some of these passes, not allowing uh, as much as they did in the first opening uh, drive that uh, the Rebels had. So, no, I believe the flag was picked up. No, never mind. Here we go. We're moving the chains now. So personal foul. That's going to be 15 up to the 34-yard line. So is this technically the still the second play or? Um yeah. All right. Throw over left side. Nice pitch and catch. Cannon Holloway. Over to the left, he had his man, Peyton Bain, who picks up about five yards on the play. Nice catch. I mean, I like the way that uh, kind of running the pattern, getting there. <coughs> and this little flag has given a little more momentum because I think that um, Fannin uh, struggling just a little bit, but this has opened up the doors. Yeah, just needed to see couple completions and then see what we can do here. Second five. Staying in the gun. Hand off right side and a good piece yeah. of running there. Number 23. I like this guy. 
Jasper Mueller. He's uh, he opened up the doors on the first drive when um, the Rebels were somewhere around the 25, 26 yard line. Broke them on through and uh, got on over to the other side, as the doors would say. Got into the red zone, got down to about the 14, 15 yard line. I like how this guy runs. He's um, yeah, could be downhill runner, but he also can pattern a little bit. But he seems like a tough kid. Yeah, he does. He does. And like you said, fan, picking up a little bit of M.O. here. Mueller stays in the backfield with Holloway. Reed Holloway goes in motion. Rebels, oh. little read option here. Keeper. Stiff arm from Holloway. Gets uh, back to the line of scrimmage, I believe. Good job. Uh, Alex Stover um, comes around, gets a hand on him, and a little shoestring tackle. But um, you know, your quarterback, you know, he was um, Cannon Holloway. He was heading places, but um, right there, that's just that little extra effort. Yeah. And um, brings him down. It's kind of running in on an angle. Looks like another timeout on the field. And the Rebels going to take a break. No score. 44 seconds until halftime. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back, live on FYNTV.com. Zero, zero, Fannin and Gilmer opening things up for the middle school football season. Reed Holloway split out by himself left. Cannon drops back, goes across the middle, number six. What a catch. And trying to drag his man down into the end zone, he gets to about the two-yard line. Great throw and catch there. Uh, Cannon Holloway finds Peyton Bain. Snuck that into a thimble. What a pass. Technically around 22 yards on the pickup. And it's technically the fifth play, and you're down to 25 seconds. Let's see how this happens. Here we go, Wildcat. Straight up the gut. Reed Holloway, he's fighting. Mm -mm. Oh, he broke the plane. He broke the plane. So we got a touchdown, Fannin. Rebels break the scoreboard first. Six nothing. Reed Holloway on the Wildcat keeper up the gut. Set up by a nice throw and catch from Cannon Holloway to number six, Peyton Bank. So the efficiency of the, the Rebels picks up because you have three minutes, nine seconds of play time. Uh, technically six plays uh, that uh, erupt. And you go 52 yards. So not too bad. And uh, I, again, I like the, uh, I like the play that uh, ja I think Jasper Mueller really uh, helps set yeah. that one up on, a, on his good run. And, of course, doesn't hurt to have another good pass play that comes up right after that. So here we go. Rebels going for two. Throw over left side. Easy throw and catch. Cannon Holloway to Reed Holloway. Eight nothing, Rebels. Slow, to, uh, Just a little slow in the uh, defense, too. Uh, it's kind of like they almost uh, got caught castle gazing, I think, the uh, – the Bobcats, but uh, like I say, there we go. Two-point conversion, 8 nothing. 15 seconds left till halftime. 15 seconds left till halftime. Gilmer will come out. Will this be their third offensive drive of the game, I believe? They'll try to get on the scoreboard, but it's Fannin County, 8 nothing.
Welcome back. Jake West, Brandon Stevens. Fannin just put the ball in the end zone. They lead 8 nothing, And here they go. A little pooch kick. Up to the 45. That's where Gilmer will take over with 11.8 seconds to go in the game. Bryson White, man that uh, just across the line, I guess usually from the size of him, he's probably more of a lineman, but uh, picks it up. And uh, like I say, just uh, just enough time to – we might see two plays come out of this. But with uh, right at 12 seconds. Yeah, I, I'd say probably not because the way Gilmer, Gilmer's offense works, you know, that wing T mm -hmm. stuff, probably just, just one. When you when you run the ball, the, the clock keeps going. Yeah. Pass the ball, you know, clock stops. Yeah. Typically. But I have a feeling, could we see the merit out? Or are they know. just going to take victory <laughs> formation? Yeah. Um, in this uh, triple option. And here they go, straight up oh. the gut. Some good running room. Picks up uh, about 14 yards, and we've got a Gilmer County timeout. That was number five, Madden Hopkins, the big bruising back, gets up the gut. I like that. I mean, uh, just, uh, again, the dive that comes up. And so, so do we sit here and talk or pay the uh, bills? Sure, yeah, yeah. What What's just – before halftime, pre-halftime takeaways here, starting with Gilmer County. What are they going to have to do differently to, you know, I don't want to say climb back in this ball game because they're only down a score. Uh, well, depending one, on what the I mean, other than this last uh, drive, I mean, uh, you've had uh, the Rebels with three possessions. They've had two. Uh, th uh, I would like to, I mean, the the def the, uh, the Bobcat defense, uh, in my opinion, has stepped up. Uh, yeah, now, you did uh, allow – uh, this this last little play, but uh, man, uh, Rebels showed that they could uh, they could break one on you and uh, you you get burnt real easy. So uh, defense has been out there a long time, but uh, on the other hand, uh, I think that uh, you know Clear Creek just want to see more uh, more of them exercising uh, their run here. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that was a nice big hole created by the offensive line last time as number five Madden Hopkins ran it up the gut, and they're going to go up the gut with. Here Hopkins again, again almost oh. broke free. Another oh. twelve yards Te and technically when he got when he brought he was down there was like just maybe a couple of fractions of a second. I don't know if they'll put more time back on, but looks like we're going to halftime. Uh let's see what the white hat says here. The way I saw it, uh they're heading off to the locker room. The way I saw it, uh, when uh, he, the Gilmer when coaches, Gilmer coaches begging, and I think he's Mad got a, he's got a good case. Madden Hopkins went down, and the best I could see was about seven tenths of a second left on the clock. Yeah, they should have stopped it at that point to give him one more play. I and, agree, and I think Madden Hopkins here, man, he's uh, he's uh, he's a little uh, bull in the china shop, uh, and I like that feeding the pig. He's running, uh, keep yeah. him. I mean, hand it off to him one more time because of the way that he was moving. Uh, he could have been into the uh, he could have been into the blue uh, uh, the land of the blue down here, but uh, I don't know. That's uh, and that's another uh, kind of a breakout thing that we've uh, seen here specifically uh, for the uh, for the Bobcats. So I want to see more of that. And uh, uh, again, in the beginnings in the first part of this football game, Jasper Mueller. Uh, I'd like to see more of him. He's he's a good runner. He's 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 tough, but he was also fast. Of course, uh, the the Holloway boys are doing uh, quite well, and really both both lines. Um, I think everybody's just dialed in. This is good football, Jake. Yes, it is. I mean, eight nothing. Played two quarters already. We'll take a break. Got nine and a half minutes before we come back. We'll hear from our sponsors before we return. At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our Five area locations. Hey, Chevrolet, place gets it done. 
For more than 60 years, you've trusted Dave Chevrolet in Jasper. You've come to know our family and allowed us the opportunity to serve yours with dignity and respect. And today, as we celebrate four generations of family ownership, we just wanted to say thank you for your support. Dave Chevrolet in Jasper, proud to be your North Georgia Mountain Chevy dealer. Hey, Chevrolet, please get it done. Find new roads. Circuit World has nine-piece living room packages at incredible prices. Get this stylish sofa and love seat, three tables, two lambs, 43-inch 4K TV, and stand. All for only $16.99.99 or $129.99 a month. Or get this nine-piece living room and reclining sofa and reclining love seat, now only $19.99.99 or $149.99 a month. These packages are amazing. Stop in today at one of our five locations and get the furniture you've always wanted at Circuit World. Larry's Body Shop in LJ. Family owned and operated since 1978. The latest in cutting edge digital technology and state of the art equipment allow our iCard Gold Class certified technicians to restore your vehicle. Our second to none customer service will work directly with your insurance company. Major accident or minor fender bender. We take the dents out of accidents. Larry's Body Shop, North Georgia's number one body shop. Visit us at collisiondecision.com. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff.
At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our five area locations. For more than 60 years, you've trusted Days Chevrolet in Jasper. You've come to know our family and allowed us the opportunity to serve yours with dignity and respect. And today, as we celebrate four generations of family ownership, we just wanted to say thank you for your support. Days Chevrolet in Jasper, proud to be your North Georgia Mountain Chevy dealer. Find new roads. Circuit World has nine-piece living room packages at incredible prices. Get this stylish sofa and love seat, three tables, two lambs, 43-inch 4K TV, and stand. All for only $16.99.99 or $129.99 a month. Or get this nine-piece living room and reclining sofa and reclining love seat, now only $19.99.99 or $149.99 a month. These packages are amazing. Stop in today at one of our five locations and get the furniture you've always wanted at Circuit World. Larry's Body Shop in LJ. Family owned and operated since 1978. The latest in cutting edge digital technology and state of the art equipment allow our iCard Gold Class certified technicians to restore your vehicle. Our second to none customer service will work directly with your insurance company. Major accident or minor fender bender. We take the dents out of accidents. Larry's Body Shop, North Georgia's number one body shop. Visit us at collisiondecision.com. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. Welcome back to uh, Fannin County High School, the Fannin Rebels Middle School, along with uh, Clear Creek uh, Gilmer's uh, Middle School, out doing some battle halftime here. Brandon Stevens, Jake West. Jake West went down to uh, take a few uh, photographs of sideline, so I'll carry you through for just a little while. The Rebels have the lead, eight to nothing. We had a nice, uh, nice pass play that took us in. We uh, setting us up. I think that getting into the end zone jasper mueller give him some credit because had a nice uh, run play that uh, just broke through the line so fan and rebels onto the sideline and the bobcats to the other side in the upper por portion of the screen coming out of halftime again fan and rebels eight and the uh, clear creek um, bobcats zero but Two possessions uh, for Clear Creek. They had 91 yards in front of them. Uh, didn't muster a whole lot of offense in that one particular play. They were getting uh, things set down. Fannin really set with their uh, their defense. And then into the uh, second quarter, four minutes, 53 seconds left to go. They had 80 yards to go. Actually made some headway and um, were beginning to move the ball. <laughs> and, of course, then they had the last uh, possession just a few seconds ago trying to get in and I I tend to think that they had like seven tenths of a second uh, after the after the runner who was uh, uh, the big man uh, going to the ground that was uh, number five Madden Hopkins now things to uh, set up to uh, kick it away Clear Creek will uh, be the uh, will receive to start out this uh, second half trying to catch the um, 
they're too uh, back deep to receive. But this is going to be a little worm burning uh, drive or a kick that comes out. Talking about Hopkins, he's the one who lands on the ball. Going to be placed right at the 45-yard uh, line. So that means 55 yards in front of uh, the, of the uh, Bobcats to uh, get into uh, the end zone. Eight minutes uh, left to go. They say that uh, no time elapsed because he fell on the ball, got the ball, and fell right on it. Again, seeing these uh, triple option, broken bone type uh, setups. Under center is going to be A.J. Callahan, the quarterback in the left side slot, moving uh, Rellinger, and we stop as a flag goes down in the backfield, and I believe we're going to see maybe some procedure. Yep, we'll back up the uh, Bobcats five yards, so now going from the 45 back to the 40, 60 yards of real estate out in front of uh, the Bobcats. Again, the man that we saw right before halftime doing really good work, Madden Hopkins, one man going wide over to the right side, Max Vaughn. A.J. Callahan is under center. Come back, hand it off. Just uh, going up the gut. Hopkins picking up the lost yards. We'll pick up the lost yards plus one. So when we come back to the line, it's going to be to a uh, second down and nine from the uh, 46. Again, going into halftime, I was telling you that one thing just to see is this guy is moving the ball, and the front line for the Rebels having a little more trouble stopping him. But also some good jobs uh, with uh, our folks, the guards and the tackle in the A-gap covering that side. The center, they're doing real well to hold on, but this one is going to be handed off over to number three, Ryan Rellinger. And Rellinger is going to have to change go back around, end around. He couldn't find the open hole on the other side. We'll lose a yard, and we'll bring up now third and 10. Third and 10 is going to be from the Bobcats 45. Well, they'll technically mark it, place the ball at the 46. A lot of running so far for the, uh, for the Bobcats. Five-man front, or at least that's the way it's appearing. Couple of the Holloways, as we were talking to you, um, one out over to the uh, right side of the line, and one covering, getting the uh, the big tall speed and everything. Now dropping back, Callahan rolls back, opens up his first pass, gets it to Hopkins, gets his man over to the 40, gets even more real estate down inside the 30. He's going to come from uh, going at the um, where were we there at the um, at the 45. Get back over to, uh, let's see, at least 15, 20, 22 yards out of that play. Great pass play uh, going over to Hopkins. And, again, this is the guy that you uh, think would just uh, bring it up the gut. No. He has a set of hands on him, too. Six minutes, 13 seconds remains in this uh, third quarter play. Eight to nothing, the uh, Fannin County Rebels leading the uh, Bobcats. Second flag of this half. We had a procedure, and now another procedure uh, call uh, against the um, against the Bobcats. That's going to back them up another five, and we'll bring them back out somewhere around the 38-yard uh, line. They were down around the 33, and I thought for a moment that the um, at the coaches, Coach Willie uh, Dodaro, uh, Dodaro rather. It's going to call timeout. Instead, nope, just, just a quick word on the side. This will be first and 15 from the uh, 38. Callahan under center. Going in motion and hand this one off. Hopkins, loose ball. Callahan will have to pick this one up, and I believe actually it falls out again. And just out on the right side slot, one of the linemen Man number 55, Noah Sanford, is the uh, is the guy who uh, picks this one up. Loss of just uh, a couple more yards. Brings up now technically a uh, second and 18. Seventh play of this drive. 
Handoff just up the middle, and uh, Hopkins will try to go across the um, across the left side of the center. Popping up uh, out with him is going to be number seven, Jace, uh, Jackson Bittner, for uh, the Fannin County Rebels, who makes a stop. Now getting wise to um, Madden Hopkins. But I'd hate to see him uh, running at me at that uh, cross center line. He's going to be a tough guy, or he is a tough guy. Five minutes, five seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Rebels eight and Clear Creek. Bobcats zero, trying to get their first score. Been a nice competitive game all the way through. Here in the third quarter, this is uh, really the first possession. Callahan flips this one out on the uh, pitch out. They'll get back to the original line of scrimmage and bring up a fourth and ten or somewhere thereabouts. Trying to catch our man that uh, had the uh, the pitch out in the end around. Number three, Ryan Rellinger. Plays cornerback. He and Hopkins have been uh, doing some good work for the uh, for the Bobcats in this ball game. Down to 4-11 left to go in the uh, third quarter. Again, the 4-1-1 in this game is Rebels 8, Bobcats 0. Fourth and 11 to go from the uh, 34 in Rebel territory. Callahan, they drop back a little, breaking out. Good pass coverage and getting his man. Uh, ball pops out, going to be incomplete. Looked like it was going to be right there to Cash Chastain. And so this is going to be a turnover on downs from the uh, 34. The Rebels will pick this one up for their first possession here in the third quarter. 3.45 left to go in this uh, third quarter. So 66 yards in front of the Rebels. Twins uh, will set out over to the right. Jason Bittner, that's the bottom of your screen. And I believe also um, that may be Thigpen that's along with. No, this is going to be uh, Peyton Bain gets the pass. Going to be behind the line of scrimmage. And tell you what, the, um, the Bobcats come in and swarm him like bees. Two or three just right on top of him and good coverage uh, coming back up, at least uh, from uh, big man uh, Jamie uh, Bautista who uh, led the charge. He's one of the big men from the line, came in and button-hooked in and uh, found him. And right there beside him was Cash Chastain. Second play for this drive brings up uh, second and 13. Balls on the uh, Rebels' 31-yard line. Top of the screen. Hadley, I'm sorry, uh, top of the screen, number 16, Brody Burnett. Bottom five and six, or six and seven, that's uh, Peyton Bain and Bittner. Uh, but we're going to end around to the right side. Uh, Cannon Holloway is going to keep it himself and will pick up the lost yards and then maybe one or two more. He'll get to the 36-yard line. Down to two minutes 30 seconds left to go in this uh, third quarter. Thanks so much for um, checking us out today. TeamFYN.com, TeamFYNTV.com. Jake West going down onto the sideline to take a few pictures. Our buddy Andrew Barley keeping us on the TV. Making all the, uh, the Rebels and the uh, Bobcats look pretty. Into a shotgun. Dropping back, Call uh, Holloway uh, will um, launch this one out, hit his man, number uh, 16, Brody Burnett, and not a whole lot of pickup. This will bring up a uh, fourth down situation. Fourth and right at six yards to go. Ball's on the uh, 38. 
Time clicking down as this uh, this ball game is really uh, winding away with us. We're uh, nearing the end of the third quarter. 90 seconds left to go until the end of the third quarter. Rebels leading eight to uh, nothing. They had a big first drive, uh, getting out 65 yards. Got well, th that's what they had to make up. Got down to about the five or the six yard line. Turned it over. And now a punt. Not going to risk this one. This one going on down and uh, giving a nice uh, rebel roll down to the 15-yard line, picking this one up. For the Rebels, Jackson Bittner. So the um, Bobcats will come back out with a minute, two seconds. With 85 yards in front of them. Seeing this one roll out in the last uh, few uh, few plays, our Bobcat man Madden Hopkins has been the um, been the guy. He and Ryan Rellinger making things happen. Either um, and a couple of the rare passes. And actually, uh, Madden Hopkins we thought would probably just carry the ball, but he actually uh, ran out and had a nice little screen uh, to the. Um, Looked like a little uh, slip screen to the right side, uh, just a few uh, few on the, in the last possession. Callahan comes back and will uh, get it out. Yep, he's turning into a celebrity. That's uh, Matt, uh, Madden Hopkins gets it through from the 15 and gets it past the 20, and he almost gets a first down out of that. Nine yards picked up for Madden Hopkins, and they're needing to. Uh, chew up some ground because end of the third quarter is coming up in about 38 seconds. From the 24, second and two. One man wide to the left or to the bottom of your screen is Nate Spears. Callahan drops back, will hand this one off. Hopkins gets the first down and then some over to the 30-yard uh, line, down over to the 32 possibly the 33 so pick up of nearly eight yards so in the last little while we've, we've been seeing this uh, this kid uh, picking up anywhere between seven to nine yards per carry as they'd say uh, where I come from that dog will hunt out to the uh, 32 yard line and we're going to march off the field that's the end of the third period stay with us Rebels from Fannin County lead uh, Gilmer as uh, middle school Clear Creek 8 to nothing. We'll be back in just a second. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. Team FYN Sports uh, doing uh, work today on uh, FYNTV.com. This is Fannin County's Rebels and uh, Gilmer County's uh, Clear Creek Elementary that's uh, doing battle here. And as you can see uh, in this um, particular stanza, we have moved from the uh, third quarter into the fourth quarter. Clear Creek really just riding the, the back of uh, Madden Hopkins. Uh, he's been uh, sent up the middle of the line, I don't know how many times, down to 
Seven minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this uh, second, in the fourth and final quarter of play. Rebels uh, scoring early in the uh, first quarter of play, and we have went scoreless in the second and the third quarters. A.J. Callahan is, uh, is our man <laughs> leading the Bobcats. Comes out, he's going to roll to the right, pitches it out, and uh, gets an end around, but not going to, actually we're going to lose uh, a few yards off this play. He was looking out to his uh, man number three, that's uh, Ryan Rellinger. Mentioning earlier, that's when one of the go-tos, now to third and 11. Started out at the 15-yard uh, line, and this is technically the fourth play of this uh, possession for the Bobcats. A.J. Callahan uh, runs back in the play, and troops come to the line. Wide out over to the uh, right side or the bottom of your screen, Jeremiah Patterson. Leading off in the back is Madden Hopkins. And motion coming back, pitch out uh, going to Jeremiah Patterson. He ends around, gets past the line of scrimmage, original line of scrimmage, almost gets to the 35, picks up roughly uh, four yards, but it's going to bring up a fourth and long, folks. So uh, fourth down and seven to go. And you're deep in your own territory. Toe may go into uh, this one. One of the coaches will uh, come out and have a word with um, with one of the uh, with the uh, referee. Legal procedure has been called against the uh, Bobcats. Now that would have uh, backed him up, and that would have replayed the uh, third down. But instead, they'll let forward momentum go, and it'll bring up fourth down. So, punting team will come back on for the uh, for the Bobcats. No one really set deep, uh, they, uh, as deep as they go, is uh, Cannon Holloway, uh, who is set back around the uh, Bobcats' 48-yard line. Seeing this one come and um, punt, but a nice high, tight spiral, nice hang time that uh, came back. I'm uh, thinking this one, was that Madden Hopkins, number five, that was punting this one away, but... Um, Going to be deep into uh, Rebel territory, back down at the 12-yard uh, line. Bannon County, this will be their fifth possession, fourth period, um, fourth quarter. Four minutes, 52 seconds uh, remaining in this uh, football game, 88 yards. Well, let's see, they technically will, yeah, it's going to be on the 12-yard line. So 88 yards in front of um, the Rebels, but really all they have to do is do a bunch of run plays, run the timeout, and uh, t carry this one home eight to nothing. Big chore here uh, could be that uh, the uh, the Bobcats need to tighten up the defense, spark a turnover. Back into the backfield, Cannon Holloway, back around the uh, six-yard line. You can see the orange shoes. Oh, he's going to carry it himself. Stiff arms, goes to the 10, 15. He's going to be out of bound. He made it up past the 20-yard line, but he steps out of bound at the 16. So pick up a four yards off this play. It's going to be second and six when they come back to the line. One man down, and maybe that's a little hard hit or maybe possibly a cramp. Caden Turner, number 78 for the Rebels. No, I'm sorry, for the, uh, it's going to be number 78, David Bright, for the Bobcats. Shaking up just a bit. A little water and a little encouragement, and he's slowly getting right back up.
Four minutes, 47 seconds remains in this football game. Been kind of a nice competitive uh, game uh, back and forth between, uh, as far as like the possessions, eight to nothing. The Rebels have the uh, have the lead over the over the Bobcats. Glad to have you watching in all the way through this uh, football game. We have one more coming up uh, right after this. We'll take a short break. Get a uh, get a hot dog and a Coca Cola and uh, in us, and we'll be right back to uh, give you the uh, seventh grade version of this uh, of these teams coming out in just a little while. And I have a feeling that um, yeah, they've had to uh, sit and endure uh, a little bit of the heat all the way through this, but it's uh, been kind of uh, keeping everybody uh, competitive and on their toes. Some good play, both sides. Uh, the the man that um, Possessed for Clear Creek, Madden Hopkins, uh, if if we were choosing like a player of the game. But on the other side, Holloway Boys and Brody Burnett and a couple of others have done really well, have uh, made us proud. Cannon Holloway, Cannon takes it through and will uh, pick up some of the lost uh, momentum and take us to the 21-yard line. First down marker is at the 22, so third and one. Third play of the series, and I don't imagine we're going to see too many uh, balls go through the air because, again, you've got four minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the game. You just want to melt the clock. Flag comes flying in to the uh, left side of the line, and I don't know if somebody lined up offside or there was an encroachment or somebody moved. Typically when you see somebody, uh, see the, the, the originating flag come in from the sideline, somebody was just a little offside. Talking to the uh, Bobcat uh, captains, and it was a hold. Face mask. So they offset. So we go nowhere. We'll stay right where we are. Third and one from the 21. First down markers at the 22. I was going to say we can't see quite see Jake West in the uh, in in the corner over there, but right there, the red. It's it's um, it's like a red uh, red stick with uh, a ball of hair on top of it. That's that's Jake West uh, taking pictures down in the corner. So timeout's going to be uh, called. It's going to be uh, for the uh, for Fannin County. We'll take a break. Three minutes, thirty-two seconds remaining. Fannin County's Rebels have a. Uh, an eight to nothing lead. We'll come back in just a few seconds and we'll get the uh, re remaining moments of this football game in just a few. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia. Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. Bannon County Rebels have one yard to go. This is third down, and flag is being tossed. An illegal substitution is being signaled for the uh, for the Rebels. That backs them up five yards. Will take um, take us back to the 16. 
So third and six. Again, fans, uh, we have a twin bill of action tonight, uh, this afternoon going into the evening. We're just um, getting into the evening hours. Sun could be setting on us a little bit, cast some shade across this field as we get game number two. That'll be the seventh graders. Predominantly here, the eighth graders uh, playing and... While probably pushing a little bit more offensive steam, the Rebels have held the ball a little more time than the uh, Bobcats. Bobcats have had some explosive, really good plays, but defense has foiled some of their schemes. A little dump pass across the lane and coming back out over to uh, number 16, Brody Burnett. And into uh, first down territory, the, uh, the Rebels will go. Time stops once again after the uh, pass play. Running big man Ethan Majors after um, Landon Shields got one of his wheels stepped on. Wide out over to the right side, Peyton Bain. Twins down to the uh, left side of the line. Jackson Bittner and a little slow to come off the line, but this was going to be a dive play. We were talking earlier that uh, this one is uh, where the Rebels trying to run down the time. That's the big uh, key here is uh, the enemy is, uh, is time. So we run it up the gut with uh, Jasper Mueller. Jasper Mueller has been uh, a guy who's uh, broken things open. And so timeout onto the field. We'll take a quick break as well. Again, eight to nothing, two thirty five remains in this football game as the Fannin County Rebels lead the Bobcats. Back to Fannin County High School. Rebels have the ball. Uh, two minutes, 35 seconds remain. Handoff uh, back over to Mueller, and um, he's been doing the work. He had uh, brought the uh, Rebels into a uh, new set of downs, and uh, to this point brings up third and five from the 30-yard line on a little slant. And, again, coaches want to talk this one over a little bit. Jake, you were a little bit uh, closer down to the uh, field. We, we actually – panned out and let everybody see who you are. Oh, yeah. Got down to the side uh, <laughs> taking pictures. It was, uh, it was the red shirt with a ball of fur at the top. Yeah. That's what, um, how, we, uh, how we boxed you out and framed you up. Anyhow, no, uh, the, uh, the second half, uh, looking like, um, you know, the guy uh, uh, for Clear Creek, uh, Madden Hopkins, um, run plays, but then we've seen him open it up with a pass or two. Still a good defense here, but uh, – Fannin County Rebels, if they can just hang on to the ball, keep the ball on the ground, and run down the time. Eight to nothing. Yeah, the defense, though, from Clear Creek done a great job. I mean, like you said, it's eight to nothing. Fannin County's had the ball the whole game, it feels like, but the Clear Creek defense just bend, don't break, and they've only allowed one oh. touchdown. There's a great oh. pass. Oh, okay. Oh, you got to be in Holloway. You got to be you got to be totally frustrated with that one because yeah. as that one uh, gets out to uh, uh, Jackson Bittner uh, across the middle of the lane. Oh, that had six written all over it. Well, there was nobody uh, really close around, and if he just turned on the Jets, he was he was going to touchdown yes. down, as I like to say. And yeah, they had he had uh, defense beaten, and that was that was yeah. nice pass play. It was Good Cannon pass. hit him in stride. Instead, now you're uh, fourth and f five from the 30. 
And you may have to punt this one. Uh, one more chance may come up to the uh, to the Bobcats. I think they may try to draw them off sides right here. And then Cannon's probably going to drop back and squib kick or pooch kick this one away. A little rugby style kick. Yep, doesn't get all of it, but uh, crosses the 50. Clear Creek's going to get one more chance with 2.15 left in this game. 50, uh, go out to the 52-yard uh, line. <laughs> <laughs> two, uh, two minutes, uh, 14 seconds uh, remaining, and you've got 52 yards of real estate in front of you from the uh, Clear Creek 48. Now, Clear Creek here, not going to waste any time. I don't know if they're used to no huddles. I mean, the way that most run um, offenses set up, they they have to take their time a little bit. And seeing if they can what, get to um, our our man uh, Ryan Rellinger, that's been the uh, the the receiver guy. Yeah, Rellinger has done good. They made. I mean, when they were crunched for time at the end of the first half, they went with. Hopkins straight up the gut, and he was picking up big chunks at a time when the Fannin County defense might have been thinking pass. We'll see what they try to do here. They go pitch left side to number six. That's a good chunk play right there. Sutton, um, and this is a guy that we haven't seen uh, a whole lot of, uh, number six, running back McCoy Sutton. Nice tackle by number two Cannon Holloway there. Stuck him, but not before a good pickup inside the 40. Well, we went from the um, – from the 48 in um, Bobcat territory, so that's 12 yards. Callahan is under center and drops back. He's going to roll out and look for a pass. Has Hopkins oh, he's wide, wide open. open. Oh, this is touchdown town. Got and him. Going in, number three, Ryan Rellinger, and uh, going 40 yards on the pass play. Two plays. They get down uh, in – Jake, in 13 seconds of clock time, <laughs> two plays, 52 yards, and one heck of a pass play. I told you earlier I was waiting on them to unleash, now, unleash Callahan and let him put it in the air. The touch he has on the ball is unmatched, and he just floated that one right into the bread basket. Now, let's see. Uh, you gotta, you got to do the two-point conversion. Let's see if this one uh, works out. But um, – Yeah, Fannin going for two when it didn't really matter early in the game makes – Gilmer have to go for two and in crunch time. I mean, two oh one left. Eight to six. Gotta have this. I'm guessing. I'm I'm putting my money on Hopkins going through. Watch him collapse. Callahan is uh, under center, breaking back and no, they'll pitch, pitch this one out and uh, they dance get is in. in. No, nope, oh, wait, hold. wait. We've we've got uh, yeah, flag it to the left side think like you're saying we'll, we'll come back and play this one again yeah i'll try to find it i think i saw the hold on the left side let's see here here it is on your screen yeah got a hold on uh looks like the left guard maybe had cannon hall or uh reed holloway by the jersey you can see holloway standing there pleading his case like yeah he had me otherwise i'd have had the tackle hold Yep. So that'll back them up. Going to have to try it again. So they'll put them out over to the um, left hash mark. And from the spot of the foul is where they go. So I saw that at the two. Ten Takes yards. him to the 12. All right. This actually could, um, well, you know, it, it's so narrow. Uh, obviously, on a two-point conversion, you, you rarely ever see, uh, you know, some sort of pass. Maybe a pitch out like what you saw there. but um, Yeah. I'm surprised they went uh, with the pitch, honestly. They might even try to pass here. Because this is a lot of real estate to get uh, two points the way things have been going. No, yep, they are going to go to the air. Look out, uh Got man. him. Oh, inside, yes. Hopkins. Hey, uh, Hopkins. So the two-point conversion for Hopkins. Wow, I what? told you. Yeah, let's take a look at this again. Here he goes, rolling out to the right. Oh, man. Fannin County defender had a beat on the quarterback, but what a nice <sighs> throw and catch. Makes it look easy. Callahan to Hopkins, and now, Brandon, it's 8-8. Eight to eight. 
I think we'll be staying here a little bit past dinner time. <laughs> this is going to be um, how much? Uh, how much time uh, in, in these uh, setups do they give you for? Or or do we go into a situation where it's like uh, a, a series of downs? Uh, yeah, yeah. You get you get four. I get four. I'm not um, sure. Or it's uh, whether they put them on the, you know, the two and say everybody goes for two this certain amount of time or. I don't know. I'm not sure. Was it uh, a lot of times they come out to the ten or the twenty sometimes? And so uh, you know, d different yeah. different places, different schools, different rules. Yeah. Strokes and folks and that uh, sort of thing. So two minutes and a second left on the clock, and now Fannin County is going to have um, football one more time. Back deep is going to be uh, Jackson Bittner. He'll be back at the twenty yard line. And Brandon, this just just. I'll find it on the replay in a minute, but this takes me back to that pass. Cannon Holloway had Bittner streaking up the middle of the field, right in the bread basket. Bittner just couldn't <laughs> corral it. That would have been it'd have been fourteen to nothing. Instead, we've got eight to eight ball game. Bobcats uh, line out on the uh, thirty-five or to, yeah, around the thirty-six. Balls at the forty, and we mentioned Jackson Bittner back deep at the uh, eighteen, nineteen yard line. No real up men. He's just a single guy back there. So I say uh, shoot for the moon back this way and uh, make him make him earn every uh, yard of it. Yeah, this one's going to go end over end. Oh, Bittner will uh, through go hands. through his hands to the ten. He'll pick it up at the eleven, being uh, chased back by number two Nate Spears. He'll bring him out somewhere around the fifteen yard line is where things go, but. Where will they uh, place the ball? Yeah, they've got the marker on the 15. So that's a long way to go for Fannin County. Less than two to go, minute 59. But spread offense, this is kind of what you're built for. Exactly. And they, uh, <coughs> they've they made some really good headway. I mean, one, either on the ground with Jasper Mueller to take you a few places across the real estate. And... Some other good pass plays. <clears throat> Going to go Burnett, Holloway, and Bittner out wide left. Holloway takes it, rolls left, looking. Got a man. Threw it a little behind him. Uh, Bittner still can't hang on to it. I was right there. Not too many people. I mean, there were people close to him in his halo, but. Um, That's at least 15 in the air. Yeah. Yeah, at least, at least a 15-yard pickup. But again, the impressive um, pass that I've seen AJ Callahan oh, yes. to uh, Relinger. What a that dive. was that was uh, that was work of art. That's beauty. And then uh, I was telling you, um, Hopkins. He's got the, he's got the combination. He can uh, he can he can uh, catch and he can run. Get the hands and the feet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And size too. I mean, yes, he's he's a, he's a big boy, and he um, he can move. He's a, he's agile, hostile, mobile, and not fragile. He's a bruiser up the middle. Holloway takes a snap. R hurried a little bit. Got some running room though up the right side, and he's going to be close to a first down. But we may have a holding. This may come back. I think that was exactly what you what you do is because again. Uh, earlier in this uh, football game, he ran over to the edge. His options disappeared. That was uh, that was that was the right move. One no, <laughs> This is this is easy to say from up here in the booth, but the way Gilmer County moved the football through the air, it's got me thinking. We just watched three and a half quarters of, and they they could have been doing that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> A.J. Callahan, well, he's got an arm, and his receivers have done a good job of getting open. So that was a hold back second and what, 20 now? Ball's at the uh, 25, and so you're at uh, like uh, 18, 17. Got to be careful here. Got to have good snap, good quarter or center to quarterback exchange here. And uh, that snap's low. Let's see, we got Official timeout. What I wasn't, what I wasn't think set? Any flag. No.
Got a referee just, and just uh, had to Gilmer head coach talking. Just had to stop and come back and confirm with each other whether they wanted nachos or a slice of pizza <laughs> at half <laughs> yeah, an hour in, after in this between. Game. Yeah, in between. No, I um, <clears throat> couldn't really tell what wasn't set. Minute 35 to go in the ball game. Bannon's got to travel, what, 94 yards? Officially, where they started uh, would have been, um, yeah, right at like um, 85, but since they've lost ground, 92 in real, in real real estate. Great job by Madden Hopkins again, getting in there, making the tackle. Hopkins and a couple of the D linemen for the Bobcats just plugging up holes. Zane Davis uh, across the middle. He's one of the um, yeah. Jamie linebackers. Batista, he got in there from the Cash Chastain. Uh, he's another. Uh, I think that's your Mike, Will, and Sam linebackers across yeah. the middle. Cause the defensive running. line's done a great job, too. David Bright, um, Jamie Batista, uh, Perez, he's been out there. On D line, there's some some big bodies down there on the D line for the Bobcats, and they're like you said earlier, they're moving around the well, really agile. Here we go. Snap is low. Holloway is going to try to pick up some ground on his feet, and he does get about five yards. Gilmer's got to call a timeout here, and they do with 34 and a half seconds left. That puts Fannin backs against the wall, having to punt this ball away. And you're going to have to do it quickly, Jake, because uh, from my estimation is that you're almost going to be right into the end zone when yeah, you do it. Close. So you've got to, once you get it, I mean, it's like you, you can't hesitate. You can't, uh, I mean, they've been doing what you've been uh, calling it, the rugby style of, uh, yeah. which, you know, you, you hold the ball, you position it, and you get, you know, you've got to almost like get it and drop it and boom, take yeah. off. And you need a good punt. You've got to put them back behind the 50. I know there's only 34 seconds left, but the, with, like I said, with the way Clear Creek was moving the football, got to got to put some green in between them and the blue end zone. And that's one thing that we haven't talked about a whole lot. Uh, the, the special teams here, uh, the uh, as far as like, and you're not kicking a field goal typically at this um, uh, you know, at this uh, uh, level of football, but uh, your punting is absolutely uh, critical. And these guys uh, are good punters, yes. both sides. Yes, I mean, Madden Hopkins for Gilmer has absolutely sent some rockets into yeah. the air. Yeah, he's got uh, um, he's got uh, a lot of special tools. Again, uh, he's a good linebacker. He's uh, a good running back, you know, that can not only just run the ball and tear through uh, anything. And, and he's he's got the agility, but he can catch and then punt it away. What what can he do? You yeah. Know? So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to follow that guy a little bit. Here we go, from the gun. Bannon's gonna drop their punter back. What'd you say from the cannon? Yeah, <laughs> they jump their punter back, and he puts it in the air. Oh, and it goes oh. out of bounds at full oh, the 26, maybe. Let's see where the referee spots it. Maybe around the 29 or so, uh, or it's it's right in the but. No, nope, they, nope. they put it up to the 32. All right, the 32. 32. Well, based on what I saw from AJ. Uh, um, uh, just a little while, a Callahan. Uh, you know, anything's possible. Now you get a you get a forty yard pass to Relinger. Can you replicate that? And I and I know that probably the Rebels are going to be looking to see uh, see that not happen. But yeah, there's this this makes it really um, an interesting football game. So here we come, one man out wide to the right, Callahan under center. Sends a man in motion. Reed Holloway trying to get in the backfield. And we've got a hold, I believe. Yep. Good defense there. Number 52 for the Rebels gets in the backfield and makes the tackle. Caden Reese. Yeah, we had a few uh, had a few linemen there trying to um, protect the quarterback, and he got out ahead of them. So we went from 34 seconds to 19 seconds. So it's Still done. enough time. Yeah. That's – Backing them up, though. Not, you don't want to go that way when you've only got teens on the clock. What do you What do you do here? You try to pick up a couple chunks, or you try to take four shots towards the end zone? Put that baby in the air. 
You're going to go to overtime. You know, what do you got to lose? Here they roll out. Reed Holloway and Caden Reese back make the sack. And that clock has burnt. all zeros on it. We are headed to overtime. Rebels and Bobcats tied at eight apiece. I don't know the overtime rules, but we'll find out, and we'll be back live on FYNTV.com. At Circuit World, we offer a wide selection of major appliances, name brands like Whirlpool, LG, Frigidaire, and more. Looking for furniture? Come by and browse our showroom or check out the Endless Aisle, a touchscreen kiosk with thousands of options. Need electronics? Gaming computers, laptops, desktops, tablets, we have it all. OLED or QLED, 4K or high def, we have the selection to get you the TV of your dreams. And don't forget, at Circuit World, your credit is always good. So ask about our convenient payment options and 120 days, same as cash. Come see us today at one of our five Five area locations. For more than 60 years, you've trusted Dave Chevrolet in Jasper. You've come to know our family and allowed us the opportunity to serve yours with dignity and respect. And today, as we celebrate four generations of family ownership, we just wanted to say thank you for your support. Dave Chevrolet in Jasper, proud to be your North Georgia Mountain Chevy dealer. Find new roads. Circuit World has nine piece living room packages at incredible prices. Get this stylish sofa and love seat, three tables, two lambs, 43 inch 4K TV, and stand, all for only $16.99.99 or $129.99 a month. Or get this nine piece living room and reclining sofa and reclining love seat, now only $19.99.99 or $149.99 a month. These packages are amazing. Stop in today at one of our five locations and get the furniture you've always wanted at Circuit World. Larry's Body Shop in LJ. Family owned and operated since 1978. The latest in cutting edge digital technology and state of the art equipment allow our iCard Gold Class certified technicians to restore your vehicle. Our second to none customer service will work directly with your insurance company. Major accident or minor fender bender. We take the dents out of accidents. Larry's Body Shop, North Georgia's number one body shop. Visit us at collisiondecision.com. In 1981, Reed Nicholson began selling tires out of an old barn in Mineral Bluff. Little did he know that he had just laid the groundwork for the most trusted names in automotive services in the Blue Ridge area. In 1997, Nicholson Tire Center became what it is today, holding the same values of faith, family, and great customer service. Two locations to serve you, and the Blue Ridge location is currently expanding to offer fast service and the largest U-Haul provider in Georgia, Nicholson Tire Center, Blue Ridge, and Mineral Bluff. We've got overtime here at Fannin County High School in this middle school eighth grade football game between the Fannin County Rebels and the Gilmer County Bobcats. Handoff, first play of overtime goes to number five, Madden Hopkins. Up the gut, he picks up about three yards and a cloud of dust. Overtime rules looks like, don't, don't know for sure. I went and asked the PA announcer, and he said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> so it looks like overtime rules are going to be each team start gets a, a drive from the 15 until one can stop the other and the other can score. So if, so Fannin, if Fannin stops Gilmer here, Fannin will still have to score to, to win the game. But if Gilmer can score, then is it over? No, Fannin will get a chance okay. to answer. All right. So it's not like NFL first nope. uh, first person to score, that, then that's it. Nope. All right. Callahan under center. Up the gut. Pretty good hole there. That time it was number 11, Cash Chastain. That's, that's a hard name to say, Cash, Cash. Chastain. Well, he uh, cashed it there, so to speak. He did. He just uh, you knew we were going to say that. Uh, <laughs> within a couple of yards now, uh, what, third and two from the uh, seven-yard line? Yep. So here do you – I mean, obviously you're going to try to go all the way into the end zone, but at the worst, put this ball into um, Hopkins' hands, but he's not framed in the backfield. Oh, got Chastain again. Yeah. Just try to get it across the five. Get a fresh set of four. And there Callahan, no. little misdirection, keeps it himself, gets 
inside the one, he's, I he's believe. Right at the one, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, and even depending on where they place the ball, yeah, he's right at the one. Didn't know if he was going to be like at the half yard line or something like that. Good play. Nice. Uh, and as I believe I can remember uh, or uh, what we're seeing uh, in there, looked like a lot of the linemen were almost standing up, and that gave him the opportunity to just kind of twist and dance his way in and in almost into the end zone. Yeah. So you got to stay low and block your man. Now it's everything's going to be real tight. He gets in. Yeah. So easy straight up the gut. Take another look at it. I don't know if you can see much, but straight up the gut. Yeah. Number yeah. seven, A.J. Callahan just keeps it. Well, that was good. I mean, because one in the A gap, they just uh, they opened it up, but then they also uh, kind of went in and insulated him to make sure that he was going in. That's really good uh, disciplined football. Yeah, like we said earlier, both these teams very, very well coached. And Gilmer's got to go for two here. Let's see. Hopkins is into the uh, backfield again. Rellinger and see who else they they put out there. Jake um, got Max Vaughn out here at the bottom of your screen, wide left. Man in motion. Callahan pitches and oh, he's got the corner. Yeah, walks in there. Was that Sutton again? I believe. No, it's um. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Sutton. Yep, yep. You're right. Number six. Now it's up to Clear Creek defense to stop Fanning County on their 15-yard attempt. Well, that's one thing you can uh, say about this uh, this game and the, and the teams here. Uh, really good defense because when you can uh, you, s you stop a long drive from Fannin in the very beginning of this football game and then all the way through in the bookends, eventually Fannin gets in in the first quarter uh, after uh, uh, second what, quarter. Uh, or second quarter, yeah. Yep. Uh, Holloway um, uh, makes his way in, but in between that, you're 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 virtually scoreless. That's good defense. Here we go. Fannin County's got an opportunity to answer. They're going to try a little slip screen to Reed Holloway. Reed Holloway makes a man miss and gets inside the three on the first play. There we go. Um, first down and. If you can do that one more time, you're golden. Nice, nice play. I almost thought Cannon held onto that ball a little too long because Reed was – nobody was even near him. First and goal. Snap, hand up, hand off up the gut, going nowhere. Yeah, that's uh, one of the guys I like, Jasper Mueller. Uh, he's earlier opened up some holes, and I, I knew they were wanting to probably um, – almost could have guessed that they would have ran it that way because in between the 20s and earlier in this football game he's made some real progress he's uh he's a good runner yeah when they were inside the five for their only score of the game they went wildcat reed holloway punched it in mm -hmm. might see something reminiscent of that nope still gonna go i would uh cannon and Mueller. Going into 23. Oh, no. Yeah. Straight up the gut. Cannon Holloway right. gets into the end zone. Now they've got to get the two, or it's all for nothing. Let's take a quick look at Holloway's run. Straight up the gut. Crosses the line before the ball comes out. Clearly there. So, got to get in the end zone. If you're, uh, I could see us playing uh, playing about um, three or four overtimes here. Jake, <laughs> the way that the the way that these guys are playing and it's very spirited and it's uh, and why not? Fan has got to get into the end zone here, or it's all for naught. Because they got the six they needed. Now they need two more. They may try to go same exact play with Cannon Holloway. Timeout taken. By the uh, Bobcats. Yep, Clear Creek. So we'll take a timeout with them, and we'll be right back live on FINTV.com.
Welcome back. Look here. He's Rebels have the ball rolling out right. Right there. Nice little pass over to Reed Holloway for two. And we're going into the second overtime. I don't think there was any ever a doubt really about it, the way these two teams have came on as of late. But let's take a look at that. Cannon Holloway rolls out. Nice, easy pass. Some good coverage. Number nine for the Clear Creek really almost got in there and uh, kind of ended this ball game. But just out of the fingertips of Jeremiah Patterson was Cannon's Hall Cannon Holloway's pass to Reed Holloway. And we'll head to the second overtime. We'll take a quick break. And we'll be right back. Second overtime, Fannin County will take possession first. And they're going to put it in the air, oh. bat it away. Good play defensively from number nine, Jeremiah Patterson. Jake, you had defenders that were in the vicinity, but uh, in, in the zip code, but not quite as close. And that was uh, just uh, that was a good pass and just, uh, just missed it there. But, uh, yeah, trying to rush to him. Probably, if he'd have picked that one up, minimally – We'll be seeing a, a, a first down. So here we go. Second and 10 from the 15. We've got Bittner out there. Uh, Burnett. Jasper Mueller's in the backfield with Cannon Holloway. Reed Holloway is in motion. Find up first man inside. Cannon takes it. He's going to put it in the air. Got his man. Reed Holloway runs another man over and gets inside to five. Well, I thought Jake, he was uh, going to take it to the house. He um, really had all the momentum and steam headed up to there. And, um, and I, well, first I, I thought that it was going to be a busted play because you could probably um, just know ahead of time that they were, they were heading for um, Reed Holloway. Yeah. But – he kind of got uh, tangled up a bit, but it worked out anyhow. Inside the five, what are they? They're on the four, four plays from the four to get it in. So, yeah, I, I like the way that um, this team, they uh, you, you can probably tell how things are going to go scripted and how they've schemed it, and it doesn't quite work, but they make it work anyhow. They yeah. make chicken salad, as I've said before. Here they go. Snap, handoff up the middle. Mueller inside the two. I almost kind of like think of him like a like a locksmith, uh, you know, because um, everything's uh, the the gaps and everything weren't very well wide open. I mean, when you're this close into the end zone, right, you know, and especially you're trying to hold on to the ball game. Um, this guy makes some headway. Yeah, he does. He's he's pretty sure-handed too. Yeah, I mean he. He holds the ball well. He's not carrying it uh, like he's a superstar, like a loaf of bread. He's he's protecting everything, and he's moving. Mueller back there with him again. Reed Holloway. Right side now. Right side's loaded heavy. And they take it. Cannon Holloway up the gut. Takes it himself. Going to be close. I don't see any hands in the air. No right guard look on this one, Jake. It's going to be right at the uh, – Half yard line. So this brings up what third down and just a couple of inches. Yep, we'll take a look at it. See how close he got from our angle, and he got real close, real close. At least from, at least from the crow's nest. Run it again up the gut. I mean, whether you, um, I don't, I don't think you waste any time handing this one off. This one's going to be um, – I think they, <coughs> they may go with Holloway here up the gut. Right. Yeah, Reed Holloway, I mean. Obviously, they're going to go with <laughs> yeah. A Holloway. What, which Holloway? <laughs> yeah, they've got Reed Holloway all lined up in the Wildcat. He's definitely taking this one. Yep. And he takes it right side, runs a man over, 
And he's in. Stays on his feet. My Lord. Great run. Just right off the right side. Runs Hopkins over and gets into the end zone. Never left his feet. That's a big old boy down there running the football. Twenty-two sixteen, Fannin's got to go for two. So I guess they uh, they toss a quarter and um, go for possession. Who gets ball first at the uh, beginning of each? Nope, just overtime. at the beginning of the first one. And if you go first in the first one, the other team goes first in the second ah, one. I see. And alternating keeps, possessions. Okay. Keeps flipping. So trips out left for the Rebels. One man up top by himself. Cannon no. takes it. Looking left. Oh, he had his man. Going to try to make a miss. He's got to throw right it in here. the air. Gets it in the air. Oh, oh little man. behind his man. Great <laughs> job by the Bobcat defense getting in the backfield and hurrying Cannon Holloway. And this is big here because yeah. now, I mean, obviously everybody kind of knows if you can score the six, get the two, game's over. And Reed Holloway's down there holding his leg. That's not good. He's big on both sides of the football for the Rebels. Oh, those guys are um, tougher than dirt. I mean, uh, the way that uh, I've, I've seen this one work out. What a game. To me, uh, I, I've heard uh, in the background, I've heard some of the, the coaches talking about, are, are, you know, are we tired? Are they tired and whatnot? I'd be getting tired at this <laughs> particular point. It, it's, it's, it's a little warm here. We started out with a heat index uh, close to 90. You're playing over turf and just back and forth. Um, you know, who's going to drop this hot potato? And um, so there's a little, uh, little chink in the armor now. I'd say they're definitely tired. Our cameraman's the only one without a chair, and he <laughs> just beads of sweat rolling off of it. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and you've had him down on the field, too. Yeah. So here we go. Callahan under center. Give up the gut. Hopkins picks up another three yards in a cloud of dust. That's what uh, Gilmer County's good for. I wouldn't be surprised here. I mean, really, to kind of break this one open, it's almost like – at this particular uh, point, uh, you, you go back, you reverse the thought of uh, run to pass. You're gonna, you might have to uh, air this one out to Ryan Relinger or somebody like that in order to get the short run. Yeah. One thing that's interesting, I don't know how they choose in which end zones they're going to play from, but that end zone that they're not playing from on the other side of the field is a lot more shaded than the one they're playing from right now. Bunch set again. Callahan, pitch, left side. Oh, he hesitated. Good job by the fan in defense, but they got to wrap up, and they finally do stop him at about the 11-yard line. Third <coughs> and six. Yeah. Here in, you've got to just uh, keep the wheels turning. Ryan Relinger uh, came over running his route. The only problem there, and – yeah, you're just trying to figure out which way to go, path of least resistance, but hesitation um, hesitation will hurt you. That was the only issue there. What is this like? Um, 11 yards to the uh, to the promised land and six, six to yep. get four more. Yep. And second overtime. Man in motion. Callahan keeps it. Nope. Dishes it. And a good job by Reed Holloway staying home and making the play. Fourth down. One more down for all the marbles here. I'm kind of looking for a Hopkins. I mean, uh, you're, you're kind of close in. and uh, Here he comes back on the field. But at this point, you, got, you have uh, quite a bit of uh, yardage to make up. You've got to have, a what, good, seven? A good, a good pass play uh, will, you know, save you a little bit. But if Hopkins can just uh, – he's been averaging seven to nine yards per carry. Got to have seven or this ball game's over. Big fourth down. Oh, Here they go, putting it in pass. the air. 
Caught! Oh, Hopkins! Touchdown. Touchdown! Wow. Now, there you go. What a play. What a play. Callahan threw it off his back foot. Not the smoothest toss I've ever seen him make, but Hopkins came down with it. We'll take a look at it because there's a timeout called by Clear Creek. Let's take a look at this. Some good pressure defensively from Fannin County and a, just a wobbly pass thrown up into the air just over the outstretched hands of number 23, Jasper Mueller. And Hopkins dances it right into the end zone. Some good discovery for the the Bobcats in this one because, hey, you've been mainly uh, uh, through the opening couple of verses of this game, you've been running the ball, not, not a lot of passes, and you uh, can air it out and make things happen. And, again, I think you, uh, you said it earlier, uh, could you have been doing this – <laughs> more yeah. all through the game and and this would uh, may have been a different game but uh and you know you 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 want to run the type of offense we talked about it earlier you want to run the type of offense that your varsity runs but right. sometimes there's a there's a once in a generation talent that comes through that makes you alter your offense that you've ran for a hundred years at the varsity level and maybe AJ Callahan could be that person because he has thrown <coughs> he, he's made it happen when it needed to happen for the Bobcats tonight. Yeah, um, it does make you think, like, instead of having uh, cornbread for dinner, we have a little bit of cake. You know, and, and that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the issue here. So, yeah. so now, put, Another, this one, uh, put this one away. Yeah, yeah one, more, one more play for all the marbles. Feed the pig, Hopkins. Hopkins is in the backfield. Callahan sets under center. Uh, Timeout by the Rebels. They're going to want to – they wanted to see what – Clear Creek came out in, but but this has been what they've played. That's what they've shown all the way through. Yeah, were they, were, were they just like, uh, or is this just, to, you know, in basketball, you uh, you you call a timeout when guy gets onto the free throw line to ice him a little bit. Yeah, is that what we're doing here? Maybe making Callahan think about it a little more. But <laughs> what's well, been a it's been a heck of a ball game so far. We got 22-22, double overtime. Gilmer County's got a chance to put it away right here. Well, number one, uh, all your guys in the trenches. When you uh, when you uh, when you look out, uh, your your big man number seventy one, Drew Dyer, uh, a couple of others across the middle of the lane, uh, Caden Reese, a few of those guys that are uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to really uh, watch and play your assignments because the, po the probability of Hopkins coming through uh, is real. But uh, you, you guys on the corners, uh, Relinger, uh, he could, he could get the pass. If you're a betting or man, what are they going to do here? Is it going in the air or is it going on the ground? Um, I think they're going. I think they're going to. I think it's going to be. Well, wait a minute. He's uh, Hopkins is offset. Let's let's. They're going to pitch uh, this. They're, they're yeah. going to pitch it to number seven yeah. on the right side. Nope. They're going to put it in the air, and he's got him. What a oh, play! Reception. Interception. Interception by number seven, Jackson Bittner. And if you, if there was a man that could redeem himself, <laughs> he just redeemed himself right. right there. What a play. And um, so dinner time gets pushed back just a little bit farther. Take a look at it again. It's Callahan a, thought he cool. had a man, but a great job adjusting in coverage by Bittner. This is better than some uh, high school and college football games that yeah. I've watched in, uh, in in recent times. So here we go, heading to triple OT. So this one goes back, and so Bobcats had the opportunity. Yeah. And it was clearly air and opportunity, right? Uh, but well, they had the opportunity just the because of their defense. Just the, just the timing. And Bobcats uh, defense still has done a great job all game Bannon's got momentum right now though so it'll be interesting if uh, Gilbert needs to come out and make a statement here on this first play I don't know it's, uh, seeing that now you've had to play back-to-back -back offensive uh, points I would almost argue that uh, momentum lies with the Bobcats uh, a little bit um, the um, 
Oh, go ahead. You call the play. Snap. Pitch. Right. We've got a flag coming out. Nope, that wasn't a flag. That was a kid throwing a football on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. He threw it <laughs> onto the field. No, I, I would almost argue that um, just uh, how you played uh, that last um, nice little throw uh, to get in and get the six – and have have worked some magic through this uh, this football game, and you know you you're kind of keeping the offense hot a little bit. Um, I'd almost I'd almost say that um, the opportunity really lies with the Bobcats. Yeah, I can see that, but the the interception with the game on the line really I I think it might have juiced the Rebels up a little bit. We'll find out here. Second and nine. Callahan got Hopkins behind him. Handoff up the gut. Hopkins, big hole. Gets let's bring up third and three. Two and a half. I believe this is uh this is a guy that um, you know, in, in future times and in, in other ball games, he's always gonna be that guy that just says, Not on my watch. You know, just yeah. uh, just keeping things moving. I can I can Something metaphysical here that you know you just like you can tell that that's that's kind of the character. Uh, uh, I, I don't know him from Adam's house cat, but uh, hey, from the way he's played, I want him on my team. Bo Kenny checks in on the D line for the Rebels. Handoff Hopkins and children. oh my goodness, children right there. He scores. I mean, yeah, he scores. <laughs> I told you. And it's, um, Let's take a look at that. The D line for the Rebels. Handoff Hopkins and. Oh my goodness, children! Right there, he I scores. Mean, yeah, he scores. <laughs> I told you. And it's, um, Let's take a look at that. He carried every Fannin County defender again, out there. Again, you're. Yeah, great job getting up the field. Yeah. It's almost like uh, you can hear the the Who playing in the background. You know, get on the magic bus. You know, just, yeah. uh, the uh, but <laughs> again. Got to have these two, and it's like head or gut. You're gonna you're gonna run it or you're gonna pass it. Yep. And um, they can do either. Got Hopkins in the back. I say though. I say uh, keep feeding him. Right side what, keeps yeah. it in there. Yeah. No problem. So nice little quarterback keeper, Callahan. Dances into the end zone, and two-point conversion is good. 30-22, to 22, Bobcats lead. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back here, third overtime, live on FYNTV.com. Jake West, Brandon Stevens, Fannin County Trails. They get their offensive possession to start the third OT. Great pass, and Bain can't hold on to it. That was a nice See, little slant route. Cannon Holloway hit him in stride. That was money all the way through. There was not a soul around him. He was out uh, really just, uh, as, as some old announcers would say, he was just clean and green. He was uh, just – just had to hold on to it, and that was it. That's all you can say. Yeah, look at him. No one within five yards around him. And right. Whew, right through his hands. Uh, and, you know, and actually, uh, not to not to cast aspersion on the Bobcats, but they were castle guys. They were kind of like yeah. watching to see, is he going to catch this? <laughs> yeah. But, um, which, uh, from time to time, you know, the the, the uh, Bobcat defense has been a little slow to start. But once, uh, you know, they've been they've been pretty good today. Yeah, they have been. They have been good. I came up with a came up with a huge stop in the uh, for the two point conversion last time Fannin County had the football. We don't have a play clock at this level, do we? Uh, yes, we do. All right. Second ten, rolling out, finds Reed Holloway. Reed Holloway never going to go down on first contact. He picks up about four yards. 
Yeah, and that's one of the other things too. As I've I've seen, uh, you'll you'll learn this as you get a little more experience. But I, but I don't think that that they're too far away from being experienced football players. But uh, somebody like uh, Reed Holloway, you got to hit him low or lower. Yeah, and and that's and it's tough to do because he's got speed, he's got size, he's he's he's. Uh, one of the tallest hogs in the trough, uh, and you know it's just tough to bring somebody like that down. And he's he's, he's a built guy, so yeah, yeah, he is. He's as big as I am when I go down there and stand beside him. I can't believe he's in eighth grade. <laughs> Got trips out left, looking for him. Ooh. Batted down at the line of scrimmage. Good that's and that's really huge. good. Was that Hopkins? Let's 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 take a look at that. Go back. Yeah. See who was. I on think the line yeah. There. That I mean because well they're uh, coming over to. See. Give them attaboys. Who was that? That was Hopkins. Yeah. Jumps up there, number five. Gets Jack his hand Nimble, on it. Jack be quick. He's Hopkins jumped over the candlestick there. His fingerprints are all over this football game. And if Gilmer wins, he's. I mean, he's got to be they player carry, of the game. Carry him off the field. Yeah. It looks like they're taking a break. Timeout taken by Fannin County. They're facing fourth and seven with the game on the line. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Game on the line for the Fannin County Rebels. Big one here, Jake. Yes, it is. Holloway, Reed Holloway in the backfield with Cannon <coughs> Holloway. No. Nope. Timeout taken. So we've got. Uh, oh, no, we've no got timeout. A, we've got, no, we've got a, uh, a Bobcat that's uh, coming off the field. Was that uh, number nine? Sawyer. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Patterson. Sawyer, Patterson. Jeremiah Patterson. Jeremiah Patterson. Looking at the wrong roster. All right, so try it again. And the, they're I'll gonna do a double pass. pass. Bittner puts it in the air. Oh. Holloway comes back for it. Batted away by number three, Ryan Rellinger. And that is your ball game. 32, uh, 22, Jake. Uh, 22 points uh, scored by the Bobcats in this overtime period. 16 points uh, scored by the Rebels. Uh, wow, you put you put all that together. Thirty-eight points in overtime periods, um, and 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 not a lot in between the regulation. <laughs> as, uh, Let's take a look at that last play. Oh no, sorry, that was the play before the last. While you're one. while you're queuing that, it's just again good defense that went through regulation, and stellar offense on both sides uh, coming through to um, uh, to carry uh, carry both sides into overtime period, and. <clears throat> You know, on on one side, uh, Hopkins, uh, he's the man, and uh, Reed to Holloway kind of stands out to me. On of course, there's so many other, so many other different plays that uh, ran out through here. So did you get it? Yeah, here it is. So they Go give, ahead. they do the handoff, try to do the double pass, and throws it up into the air. Holloway tried to come back for it, but number three, Ryan Rellinger, Telegraph. bats it down and. That's ball game. So we'll take a break. We'll be back for the seventh grade um, Bobcats versus seventh grade Rebels here live on FYNTV.com. <laughs> 